Hello everybody, I'm Gwen Campbell Mendes. Welcome to Gwen's Bookish Ramblings. And today we are doing The Road to Oz. Um, now, this is the fifth book in the series. Um, and in this one, Dorothy's adventure doesn't start in quite the same, uh, shall we say, ordinary way that her other adventures have started. Because, you know, in the first book, she gets picked up by a cyclone, and in her, and uh, in Ozma of Oz, her next adventure in Oz, she is on a ship and gets swept overboard, and uh, Dorothy and the Wizard in Oz, she falls through a crack in the earth. The thing about this one is that there's no grand traumatic incident that indicates a shift to anything else. A hobo uh, who is called the Shaggy Man uh, from the beginning of this book all the way into the end of the series, uh, he shows up and asks her, do you know the way to Butterfield? And she says, and she starts trying to give him directions, but they're very confused directions because Dorothy is clearly not very good at giving people directions. Um, you know, she says, well, you have to turn left at the second stump. No, wait, is it the third stump? Anyways, uh, she says the rather offensive statement that, well, since you're too stupid to understand me, I'd better show you the way. The thing about Dorothy is she's a delightfully flawed character, that she's very, very kind-hearted um, and determined to help, but she does kind of leap to conclusions about some people. Um, she has moments of not being very bright, but the thing about the thing about that though is it's part of what humanizes her. Um, you know, she's a little bit she's a little bit like Alice of Alice in Wonderland, except Alice in Wonderland is being used as sort of a trick means to allow the reader to see precisely how ridiculous Wonderland is due to this ongoing insistence of trying to do things correctly. Dorothy is just a hardcore adventurer who has some has some issues with making assumptions about other people, I think. Uh, but anyways, she decides to help the Shaggy Man to show him which road he needs to go down to get to Butterfield, and they get to the crossroads and she says, well, it's that one. And he turns away and says, great, and now I'll go any other way but that. And she's like, wait, didn't, didn't you want to go to Butterfield? And he's like, no. There's a man in Butterfield who owes me 15 cents. I don't ever want him to pay me back, so I'm going to go anywhere but Butterfield. And this, this comes back, actually, at the end of the novel, this insistence that money is the root of all evil, which in its way it is, but for those of us in the real world, we all understand that there are jobs that are so awful that the only way to make people do them is to effectively bribe them. Or in the case of, you know, how our world functions, we say, uh, you know, we do this job, you get money enough to live on, in theory, but we're not going to discuss the complexities of, you know, socio-political whatnot. Anyways, he decides to go anywhere but Butterfield, and then that's when Dorothy finds out that all of a sudden, this familiar intersection that showed the way to Butterfield has turned into an intersection with dozens of roads, and she has no way to tell which one will take her home. Um, and she is abruptly lost. And after a certain amount of thinking, she and the Shaggy Man both agree that they might as well just pick a direction and start walking because they're certainly not going to get, she's certainly not going to get home from that crossroads if she just stands on it until somebody, and just hopes that somebody will find her, especially since she all of a sudden doesn't know where she is anyways. Uh, so they trundle on and then run into the young boy Button Bright, who Apparently, his mother always says he's bright as a button, so his father calls him Button Bright, and what he is is a boy who doesn't know very much because he's a very little boy. He's probably three or four, and very honest, when somebody asks him a question, he will say, don't know. You know, don't you like it? Don't know. Um, 
And Dorothy, of course, leaps to the conclusion that he's stupid, but the real, the really interesting thing is what he is is very young, ignorant, but aware of how ignorant he is, and supremely honest about it. It makes him a very interesting character because on the one hand, he seems... On the one hand, yeah, it seems a little dumb that, you know, some of the questions people ask him, he doesn't have any answer to. You know, where do you live? He has no idea. He doesn't even know to say, in a big house with a giant tree stump in the yard. He's just like, I don't know. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, you talk to a child who's small enough, and that child will know that, where do you live? At home. Where's home? At home. Uh, so... There's, there's an interesting quality to this character, and then they stumble into Polychrome, the Rainbow's daughter, uh, because the Rainbow is sort of a personification, uh, but also, you know, he's got rainbows that he throws around anyways, and he's got several daughters, Polychrome being one of them. And along the... and So it, it makes for a difference for the start, because... There's no earthquake, there's no storm, there's no cyclone, there's just the roads abruptly multiplied. And it makes this, it makes the introduction, the start to this adventure very, very different. Um, anyhow, so Dorothy, the Shaggy Men, Polychrome, and Button Bright all trundle their way onward and have various adventures uh, as they continue on their way until eventually they do reach the great desert that surrounds Oz and manage to take a sand boat across and arrive in time for Ozma's birthday. And the thing about this book is it's it's almost like the culmination of the others in that at the start of this book they just start walking. That there is no fixed destination. There's just we need to get somewhere with somebody who can help us all get to, you know, wherever we're going. So we're just going to walk. And the book is just about the people they meet on the way. Even when they get to Oz, you know, the whole grand spectacle of Ozma's birthday was never the point. I mean, it's discussed, and everybody asking Dorothy, if you run into Ozma, have her invite us to her birthday. Um... Even that shtick, it, I mean, it has the payoff in that they all wind up at Ozma's birthday, but at the same time, uh, it's not the point. The point is just seeing stuff. The point is just the travelogue. And in a lot of ways, The Road to Oz is kind of like the ultimate Oz book because it's the most ultimate of the pointless rambles that make up these books, these things where, you know, we're walking in a direction not to, you know, that, that that we don't have a story with a rising action, a climax, and, and a declining action and resolution. We just have a series of events until Dorothy finally finds her way home. Um, and again, it's part of these books' charm that, that the adventure is just in the journey. And, you know, we have that whole cliche, life is about the journey, not the destination, and so on and so forth. But, but most other novels, especially children's novels, tend to have a story that, you know, has a clear beginning, middle, and a clear uh, clash, a, a, you know, an antagonist. There's no antagonist in this book. There's a series of people who are problematic or in some ways in opposition to our heroes, but we don't have, you know, somebody who's fighting them. And even when you think about The Wizard of Oz, like, the witch is sort of an antagonist, but, like, Dorothy and the others make it to the Emerald City, and if they had just settled down and stayed there, frankly, I'm not sure the witch would have ever done anything. Um, you know, they go, they confront her because they want to get home and stuff, but, but it's not, 
it's not a primary opposition. It's not something that's there on the other side. You know, in the film, yes, the witch is actively working against them throughout the movie. But in the book, no. They just wander. And in this one, they wander, and there is even less of an opposition. They just kind of go places and do things. But I, I love that about these books because it's it's such a wonderful exploration. It's such a wonderful thing because it's unabashed world building without some sort of specific plot, and it's very, very enjoyable. It's very, very enjoyable just to see this world unfold in front of our characters and to and to see what is there and where every, and and how everybody acts and interacts i i just i enjoy all of these books so tremendously and as i said this one is kind of almost the the most central uh, the, the most oz type oz book because just of how it's constructed and how it goes and how Dorothy gets to Oz and what happens when she gets there. Um, the end of this book, I feel, may have been something that people drew inspiration from for uh, the end of the actual Wizard of Oz, since this is the first book where Dorothy is not going to reappear in Kansas or wherever her aunt or uncle are, and sort of race forward to them out of nowhere and say, Hi, I'm back. She just was the as the story ends, she ba the agreement is that she and Toto will go to sleep and when and Ozma will transport them in their sleep back to her bed in Kansas and she'll just wake up in her bedroom at home and walk down the stairs and scare the ever-loving crap out of her aunt and uncle who will wonder where the heck she was and why she didn't tell them when she made it back. Um uh, it, it These books do not bear too close looking at the relationship between Dorothy and her aunt and uncle. Um, it's very, very clear that Dorothy loves them dearly, but she's also... We've also got a little bit of J.M. Barry's young and gay and heartless going on here, in that Dorothy very often does not fret that her aunt and uncle will be worried about her, she tends to take a very philosophical view in a lot of these cases of, listen, until I get back, there's nothing I can do about it, so I'm not going to worry about it. But, um, you know, there's there's a vague quality to some of these of, uh, maybe you should be a little more anxious to get home uh, instead of, you know, hanging around in Oz indefinitely, but... I mean, such is... The, the point is, Dorothy loves the adventures, and she makes it home, and she's welcomed back, and I think that her aunt and uncle are well aware of her predilections by this point in time, and probably also, by the time the road to Oz happens, probably they don't even contact the neighbors to say, my God, she's missing, because uh, the last couple times this happened, she came back a few days later telling them about talking lions. So, uh, it's, it, it's just another entry in such a fascinating and fun and childlike, delightfully childlike series. Uh, so I think, I think that's everything that I have to say about this, uh, Nobody's going to be particularly interested in the details of the Scoodlers or others that appear in these books. If they're really interested, they should probably read the books. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that's everything. So I will see you all next week.